violence and other kind of violence. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. It is a growing community here in New Orleans that no mom or dad wants to be a part of. Parents of children who have lost their lives to gun violence in the city. And the numbers are alarming. And So, um, guys, how many times have I done stories like this? If you've been with me since the day one of starting this channel, I've done multiple, multiple stories on recaps uh from mothers who have suffered from losing a loved one to the super gremlins on demon time and it doesn't get old the solutions that they present continue to be the same and we get no change out of any of this but i do want to show you guys what these mothers are going through i also want to show you guys um some of the conditioning and the mindset of a lot of these women so let's get into it in fact in 2022 the number one cause of death for youth in new orleans was homicide wdsu reporter shay o'connor held a discussion with mothers who've lost their children to violence dylan burton a seven-year-old shot she called and killed on the west bank the day after christmas jameer alfred a 14 year old he was shot and killed christmas night at a walgreens in new orleans east then there's to wayne williams shot and killed inside of a vehicle also in the east while on his way to his own concert mm. i held a candid conversation with their moms on how they're coping and the true causes of gun violence here in the city every mom here is a part of a group that so many moms are joining now, right? Um, mothers who've lost children to, to gun violence in the city. Um, for someone who has not experienced it. If you All right, so um, let's just go back to this sister in the blue if we can. Let's see. To, to gun violence in the city. Um, for some She's got a face tattoo and this is a, it, it appears to be an upside down teardrop tattoo. I mean, y'all know what that means. So it's safe to say that eh, maybe her son was kind of asking for it. Someone who has not experienced it, if you could explain that feeling. For me, um, you know, being a mother that has lost a child, you know, has been the hardest thing in my life that I've had to accept and, and deal with. It's been a year and like, I'm not accepting of it. Like, I'm not accepting of it. Oh, okay, it, it, it might be a P or a D as well. I'm not sure, but the fact that she has a face tattoo, it just kind of sheds a light onto maybe how this young man was actually raised. It's so hurtful. Like, every day I cry. Every day, every day I cry. <clears throat> like, my other kids, it's hard to be a parent. I try to be so strong, you know, um... It's, it's tough, but you know, we make the best of it. Oh, it's hurtful. <laughs> it's hurtful. Like, it's no understanding. I can't understand it. To go day to day, you know, knowing that the person who killed your child is, is hasn't been arrested, if, if y'all would like to just kind of talk about how that feels. I don't know. Like, I don't know who it could be. <laughs> Because I know it was his for us, you know? So, I don't know. I just don't know. It's nothing I can say. It's nobody I can say. I don't know. Just not knowing is just a whole lot. You know, you can be around the person, you know, and don't even know. Well, yep. I think everybody's um, case is different. I know mine is. Jameer was with family, and I feel, and Jameer's family feels that those people, those two cousins that he was with, knows exactly what that was about and i feel that they need to step up damn so you heard what she said she said the cousins knew exactly what it's about and they ain't talking street code in full effect even the cousins of the fallen will not speak up or speak out against these super gremlins on demon time 
and they need to tell the truth because you had an innocent 14-year-old that lost his life. I mean, just to take it back to you, Risha, I know there's been several stories that I've done where I'll interview a mom of someone who's lost a child to gun violence, and you'll text me and say, what's that person's number? Like, I like to reach out to her. I like to give her a gift. Mm -hmm. I like to bring other moms to her because you support these these two women. Y'all have all kind of yeah. formed a bond, yeah. a trauma bond. Yeah. If you could talk about what made you just want to start reaching out to people and does it bring you a sense of peace? I had to accept, really accept that Jameer was gone and he wasn't coming back. And then God just started aligning people into my life and, you know, things that really happened for me to reach out to other mothers, you know, because it's hard. You know, you don't have nobody, you know, people say, you know, I can only imagine. You don't want to imagine this pain. Mm. This is pain like no other to know that your child will never walk back through your door. You don't have the proper answers. You know, the, de the detective is not calling you back. Nobody's saying nothing. But I had to bury my child. And, you know, a reason why the detective isn't calling you back because he doesn't want to call you back with, bad news or little to no news at all so they're going to call you back when they have a lead they're going to call you back or at least when they've explored that lead they're going to call you back when they actually got something tangible because that's how men work okay we don't want to be calling and giving oh no fluffy stuff like oh we're working on it we're, we got it all resolved no nah. it's like i don't want to say nothing till it's done and i just got to go on with like when it comes to the cause if I was to ask you all what y'all think is the cause for the, the uptick in violent crime here in New Orleans, um, particularly among youth, um, what, would, what would each of you say? I think um, it's a lot of parental neglect, um, low self-esteem. Mm. You heard what she said, parental neglect. Okay. <laughs> And a lot of people are giving her the side eye, seems. They didn't really want to address that parental neglect part on the uh, perpetrator and maybe even sometimes the victim's side. Now, I'm not saying that they were neglecting their children, but what I am saying is, um, you know, she's making some great points about parental neglect on either side because it can go both ways alcohol and drug abuse, mental health. It's a it's a whole bunch of things, but just to name a few, our kids are lost. Mm. It seemed like a high. So these are the black mothers saying this. This is not me, guys. I don't know why I get censored. I don't know why people come into my comments and say, oh, da, da, da. this is what they're saying. We're lost. There's no hope, no solutions. You know, parental neglect, low self-esteem, hatred towards your own kind in the community. This is what the sisters are saying. Okay? It's what they're saying. It's not just me. That they're on, and it's just a constant one. You know, either it's murder, it's carjacking. You know, yep. it just seems like they just don't have no heart. They're just heartless. Mm. But what's the underlying cause of the uptick in violence, the solution? How do we prevent any more moms here in New Orleans from losing their babies to gun violence? We explored that part of the discussion Thursday night. I'm Shay O'Connor with WDSU News. Yo, what's good, BGZM News 17 family? I'm at the corner of Jesse Jackson and Marcus Garvey. And I got some bad news for you. As you can see, I lost my job. I'm out here living in cardboard boxes outside of boarded up vacant homes. YouTube said, I'm done getting money out here in these streets. They even took my funky ass suit. So anything right now would help. So go ahead and hit that cash app, hit that PayPal, hit that GoFundMe, hell, cop the merch. Or if you want to make the long-term commitment, to the Jinquavius Jackson Fund. Join the Patreon so that I can continue to put out top-notch content each and every day. Also, <laughs> check out the Rumble. 
where there is absolutely no censorship link in the description box below hey, yo, 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 ain't that that nigga did Quavius? Yo, I recognize No, that's Chris not me no more Hey, yo, run your pop Y'all tell me what they say Do the opposite of Antonio Brown and take what all your What more do you want from me? Unfortunately, with Carnival comes the risk that your vehicle may be broken into while you're out there having a good time. And Paul Murphy reports a Metairie state lawmaker is hoping to crack down on the crime by giving those convicted of simple car burglary a mandatory jail sentence. Mm. Car burglary. And I'm going to say this right now, like the way she said, I don't like the way she said a simple car burglary. It's not simple. It's not just oh it's just a simple car burglary no it's an invasion of privacy mandatory jail time 100 percent let's go crack down on the crime by giving those convicted of simple car burglary a mandatory jail sentence car burglary is the kind of crime that shakes your sense of security i absolutely do not want to drive my car back into the city Earlier this week, Don Tucker and his wife traveled from Slidell to New Orleans for the opening night of Tina at the Sanger Theater. Mm. While they were enjoying the show, they say this man was breaking into their car. Damn. Video from one of their vehicle's security cameras shows him riding up on a bike, looking around, then shattering a window with a spring-loaded glass breaker. Damn. After the show let out, we had a 100-foot walk from the Sanger Theater back to our car, and... Um, when we got to the car, we noticed our back window was broken out. And he's seen that, uh, that matte black, um, wrap on it. And he knew that it was some bread behind it. Mm, 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 mm. After rummaging around in the car, the man rode away empty handed. And I think people just have had enough and we've kind of hit a tipping point. Metairie so State Representative Lori Slegel is proposing harsher penalties for simple car burglary. Her bill would provide a one to 12 year penalty for anyone who commits the crime within one square mile of any fair, festival, musical or theatrical production, parade or sporting event. Mm. It would also apply anywhere for those caught breaking into a string of vehicles. It's the first year is not probatable, so it pretty much tells people you're going to jail if you do this. Schlegel hopes the mandatory minimum sentence will help reduce car break-ins. She says right now many people are afraid to go into New Orleans. They don't want to go to the parades because their car might be broken into when, they, when they're finished having a good time. So Tucker says, unfortunately, when you come into the city to see a show, you now have to factor in the price of dinner, tickets, in his case, $300, and the price of a $1,500 window. If you're driving your car into the city with an expectation that you're going to be fine, I would not have that feeling. Schlegel's bill is expected to be considered during the upcoming legislative session. Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News. Taylor Jones was a young woman who friends say was drawn to New Orleans because of its culture and music. She found a home in the city and was working on a music career. She ended up murdered, leaving her friends determined to bring her killer to justice. Mm. Inside Cafe Negril on Frenchman Street. I love that we moved her up here. The smiling face of Taylor Jones greets everyone who walks through the door. You can really see her now. Just like she did when she worked here. Emily Rollins hired her on the spot. She just had an energy about her. Uh, I was super excited to get to know her and she was excited to work here. They became fast friends. We would hang out and go to other music clubs together. Um, she hung out with everybody. She came fast friends with everybody. Rollins knew something was off when Jones didn't show up to the holiday work party in December of 2021. And guys, um, I covered this story uh, pretty much some lunatic stabbed her in the chest. <clears throat> and right now it's still looking like we don't have any suspects. And this is a year later. So <sighs> obviously the community is not speaking up. Uh, they're not really concerned about this black woman who lost her life um, randomly. And it's, it's pretty upsetting because I come in day to day, do multiple videos on these types of situations. And 
although I do have a good amount of support, I also have a lot of ridicule. And most of the ridicule is coming from the community, coming from sisters, okay? Black women who say that they support black women and black girl magic and they scream at the top of their lungs that black women are the least protected. But then when you call out the super gremlins who are endangering these same women, there's an issue. Then that person who is bringing truth becomes a sellout. Then that person who is, you know, asking for justice becomes a snitch, becomes a rat. So, you know, you can't win for losing in the community. There are no solutions these tenements or um, foundations and how we go about getting justice is set in stone. And the reality is in the community, there is no justice. Okay. The only type of justice is, you know, some type of, some type of loose connection to karma. Okay. That's, that's the best word that we're going to get in the community. Some type of loose, vague connection that we can say, oh, well, you know, this guy had done all these things to all these different people. And now karma finally caught up to him. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we're dealing with. She didn't show up for work the next day either. I think it was two days later by the time the, uh, the police had got to me. New Orleans police say 26 year old Jones was stabbed multiple times inside her Bywater apartment on December 21st, 2021 in the 700 block of Lesseps Street. This was a, a home invasion case by all accounts. Detective James Fife was assigned to the case, one of his first as a detective. On this case specifically, I was getting obviously frustrated in the first day or two when, when we didn't have answers. Because it was a stabbing, Fife says there was no ballistic evidence to work with. Several people were interviewed, but no motive was established. Mm. It's been a particularly tough case. I mean, you know, they, we handle them all equally diligently, um, but this one has has been extremely difficult. The biggest piece of evidence so far is this surveillance video showing who police believe is the suspect walking towards Jones apartment before her death Dang. then running away after fully masked, fully gloved, wearing all black on uh, the wee hours of the morning. Just more than a year later, Sheesh. friends and family are left wondering whether anyone will be arrested. And she was just such a beautiful, colorful person. To keep attention on the case, Rollins recently teamed up with a local artist. She's created all of these flowers for us to sell. Rollins hopes the money raised will bloom into tips. All the money goes to Crime Stoppers to help increase the reward. And now everybody can have a little piece of Taylor in their home too, or a, or a whole bunch of her. Jones moved to New Orleans from Boston. The culture attracted her. The music kept her. She really wanted to be a singer. She loved to skateboard, um, play her guitar or her ukulele. Her parents tell me all the time to this day that they are so happy that she was so happy that she'd found a place that welcomed her, that reflected her that reflected her loves of life mm. a life her friends still find tough to accept is no longer present in theirs they're not giving up hope though you can't just stab somebody to death and and be walking around there's got to be something there's got somebody's got to know something and let's keep it a buck she voted for this let's just keep it a buck she is a liberal white woman and we pretty much can surmise that, yeah, she 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 definitely voted for the people who are in power today who implemented the policies that, you know, inevitably brought us to the situation that we are now. No cash bail. OK, Pri criminal justice reform, prison reform, bail reform. All these things are a net negative on the. Um, safety of the community and she contributed so she's gonna have to you know <clears throat> she's gonna have to eat her just dessert as well because there's enough blame to go around for everyone those flowers can be bought at different price points you can get them at cafe negril on frenchman now the money raised goes directly to the crime stoppers reward which is at seventy five hundred dollars right now not Anyone enough. who sends tips to Crime Stoppers will remain anonymous. Not enough Mike to move McDaniel, the Eyewitness News. Gang violence and other kind of